All right, so now we're going to do some examples. Let's start with a yo-yo. If you have a yo-yo, um, you can think of it as um, there's two things that you need to consider. Um, we have, have to consider the net torque because the yo-yo is rotating, and we have to consider the net force because the, ro the yo-yo is moving. So in all of these problems, you are going to have to consider both the net torque and the net force. Um, all right, so our net torque, there's different ways that you can do this. Um, we are going to try to be, if anything, excessively pedagogical um, because then later you can work on um, simplifications. So I like to start with my coordinate system. We will use the standard coordinate system because there's not any good reason to use anything else. Um, and then we can write the net torque. Another good thing about being very pedagogical and writing everything as vectors, it gets you in the habit of writing things as vectors because later on, especially in more advanced classes, you are going to be in a lot of trouble if you do not write things as vectors. All right, so now we look at for the torque, we have R cross the force applying the torque, which is just the tension. The, um, the gravitational force does not apply a torque because the gravitational force um, acts on the center of mass and the gravitation, the center of mass is also the center of rotation. So the, when we do R cross F, R is zero, so it doesn't matter what F is, gravitation, the gravitational force cannot cause a torque. Um, in this particular case, because our yo-yo is isotropic, the, the weight is evenly distributed. Okay, so now when we do R cross F, we're gonna line our fingers up with R and curl them towards F, and the, um, and the torque is gonna be pointing towards me. Now, if I fill in my coordinate system, Z is out of the board. Um, in physics, we always use right-handed coordinate systems, which means that X hat cross Y hat equals Z hat. Um, okay, so then that means that the net torque is R, T, and then it's gonna be a positive Z hat. The net force, oh, and that is also equal to M alpha. Now, the yo-yo is going to be rotating counterclockwise. To get the direction of alpha, we curl our fingers with the rotation and our thumb points in the direction of alpha. So that is also towards me, which is good because the only thing that can cause the torque is the tension. So this is M alpha, the magnitude of alpha Z hat. Um, we can also write that that is M A over R Z hat. We are going to have to um, eventually solve for A. Okay, I'm going to write my net force in a different color so it stands out a little bit more. So it's clear which one's force and which one's torque because my writing's a little crowded. Okay, the net force in this case is going to be m g minus t no negative m g plus t um, in the y hat direction and that is going to equal m a and this would define y hat to be, this would define the acceleration to be, so if it's positive, it is going in the y, it is going in the positive y direction. Okay, now what we can do, now we do, now that we have our net force and our net torque equations, we plug stuff in and um, we can move from there. So we're gonna take the torque equation 
and say this means that the magnitude of the tension is m a over r squared. Um, so r t equals m a over r. So then that is, so that's the net tension. And do I have, I'm just double checking units. I should have Newton meters on both sides. Ah, I have screwed up. This is why you do the sanity checks. This is an I. I'm gonna leave those screw ups. I'm doing this from a hotel room at a conference in the morning, trying to head for a plane. So my brain is distracted, but I think, or at least this is my excuse, that it is also pedagogically useful for you to see when I screw up. Okay, that makes sense. That should have been an I, not an M on that side. And now, I over R squared has units of mass. So I get that the tension has units of mass times acceleration. And that does, in fact, make sense. And this, I can plug back in here, which is going to lead me to the next step. Here, I'm going to only look at the magnitudes because that's going to make life a lot easier. My equations are a lot less ugly. Negative m g plus i a over r squared equals m a. OK. And then I can rearrange. I'm going to put my a's on, both, on one side. So I am going to move this guy over there. And then I get negative mg equals m minus i over r squared a or a equals negative m g over m minus i over r squared and i am going to rearrange this so it's actually equivalent to g times i over m r squared minus one. Okay, now if that moment of inertia is equal to zero, um, then this simplifies back to the acceleration is negative g. That's a good cross check. I have to get back to something that makes sense. Um, and then I can consider the, let's see, the another case that what that what that acceler what that moment of inertia is going to do is it's going to slow down the yo-yo. That makes sense. Um, the tougher it is to get that yo-yo rotating, the slower that uh, that yo-yo is going to travel down. So that's the acceleration of the cylinder. All right. Here. We have a solid cylindrical wheel of mass m and radius r. It is pulled by a force applied at an angle. If the wheel rolls without slipping, what is the maximum value of f? Um, and when I when I copy and paste these out of the solutions, it messes up some of the equations, but we can, it, it's giving the static and kinetic coefficients of friction. We're going to not put the numbers in and just go through how you think about it. Same deal. Net torque, net force. Okay. 
So in this case, the force is applied at the center of the wheel. The assumption is that the force is um, then the, at the center of mass. We're assuming the center of mass is exactly at the center of the wheel. And when we do that, then we don't have to, um, we don't have any torque from that. So if we write our net torque force, ah, ah, I have to switch to annotation group. We're going to use these coordinates, x, y, and then we're going to, that puts z out of the board. Um, and I am going to write my net torque. This one's easy because there is only one force that is applying a torque, and that is the friction. So that is equal to F sub S. Now, F cross R. Now, in this case, the vector R is always the vector from the center of the wheel to the point where the force is applied. F cross R is now into the board. Um, so it is in a negative z hat direction. The complication here is that the net force, we're going to have to use the net force to give us the, um, the net, um, to give us the normal force, to give us the magnitude of the friction. We're going to have to say that there is no net y force. All right. And now we write, I will do the same thing. I'm going to switch colors and the net force is equal to negative m g y hat plus n y hat minus f sub s x hat plus cosine 37 degrees f x hat plus sine 37 degrees f y hat. OK. So now, and we are given the mag, you would have to have the magnitude of, and I think the problem in the book actually does have it, you would have to have the magnitude of the force F I, to get the exact numbers. I know that the net force in the Y direction is equal to zero. So I have negative, <clears throat> M, G plus N plus F sine 37 degrees is all equal to zero. So I can solve this to say N equals MG minus F sine 37 degrees. So the more that force is at an angle, it's helping pull the wheel up a little bit so that it makes the normal force less. All right. And then the net force in the, um, the net force in the x direction. And this is asking the maximum value of F, um, we now know the maximum value of F is going to be, it is, with, it is rolling without slipping because it is rolling without slipping. That actually means it is the static coefficient of friction because when you have rolling, the, the friction force is keeping it it, it, the the point is not rubbing against the wheel. The point the wheel or sorry the wheel the point of the wheel that touches the ground is not rubbing against the ground. So our maximum um, our maximum friction force is 
mu sub static, mu sub k s static, n. So it is mu sub s m g minus f sine 37 degrees. And then our net force in the x direction is, I'm gonna try to get my highlighter here. I'm not sure this is gonna work. I'll underline it. All right, in the y direction, there we go, okay. Ah, that's not what I wanted. In the x direction. In the x direction, I have this force and this force. All right. So my net force is going to be in the in the x direction. Ooh, this one's going to be a long one. Mu sub s negative mu sub s m g minus ooh, this one should have a mu sub s mu sub s f sine 37 degrees i have made Uh, this one should be a positive. Um, and the second one's negative. So that the, um, the force capital F slightly decreases the frictional force. And then I have F plus F cosine. 37 degrees is equal to m a and the acceleration here is in the x direction and then i'm going to go back to my torque equation this is equal to m alpha if i think about magnitudes if it's rolling forward it is rolling clockwise, which is in the uh, which has an alpha in the negative z hat direction. And or no, no, I did the same thing. I did the same thing. This should not be m alpha. It is i alpha. Um, and this is equal to i a over r z hat. All right, and now I also have that F sub S, we may actually sneak this in and revert back to calling this F sub S because it's a big ugly, it's a big ugly mess. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors again. I wanna, oh, I should put a box around this. This is one equation. I just had to squeeze it into two lines. Um, all right. So now we have actually, I need to fix a couple signs here. I had a negative F sub S. And that means that. This guy is negative and that guy is positive. All right. And then I have negative F sub S plus F cosine 37. degrees, and this has to equal ma, 
I am going to rearrange this and say that A equals, oh, this should have been a capital R, not a lowercase r. A equals F sub S R squared over I. So this is equal to M F sub S R squared over I. I'm not going to do all the algebra to get to the end because I am running out of space on the screen. Um, and it would only get messy and illegible. Now the problem is that your F sub S has a capital F um, and you've got a lot of extra terms in there. So you have lots of ugly terms, but you can solve it. Um, it's just algebra. So we'll stop there and leave the rest as an exercise for the student. All right, this one. To use the right hand rule to determine the directions of the angular momentum about the origin. So here we are going to the angular momentum about the origin. It's always um, L equals R cross P. Okay, so this is R in this case and P and, R and B, the, the momentum and the velocity are in the same direction. So this is R in this case, and I get into the board, R cross B. Switch some colors. This is R in this case, R is parallel to V, so the answer is zero. And this is R in this case, R is, well, sorry, the first one, the previous one, R was anti-parallel. It's still zero. This one, R is parallel. So the, so the answer is zero. Here, R cross V is out of the board. Get comfortable with cross products. You're gonna be doing them a lot. Um, and, it's a good idea to just practice some basic problems because that's a nice, lovely thing to, to ask on an exam. A particle of mass m is dropped at the point d zero, negative d zero and falls vertically in Earth's gravitational field. What is the expression for the angular momentum around the z axis? Okay, so this is the z axis. Um, because we always have x hat cross y hat equals z hat. So that's the z hat axis pointing out of the board. Um, and we want angular momentum. I'm going to not use brown. L equals r cross p. OK, so here we can write the velocity from our understanding of kinematics from previous um, from previous units. The velocity is going, it's starting at, we're going to assume it's starting at rest. It did not explicitly say in the problem. Uh, but then we have negative G T, I like by hat, not J hat. To me, it makes more intuitive sense to use X hat, Y hat, and J, X hat, Y hat, and Z hat. Okay, so that is our velocity. 
at any given point in time. Um, and now it's R is always going to, so R, the position is going to be negative one half G T squared Y hat plus, oops, well, it's a minus, plus a negative, minus D. Uh, I meant to do an X hat. And I meant to do the eraser. X hat. Okay, so now, and then our P is always going to be M V. So this is our P. And when you do R hat cross P, or when you do R cross P, um, Y hat cross Y hat is zero. So R cross P is going to be negative x hat cross negative y hat, which is going to be in the positive z direction. So we get the, uh, it, and then only the x part matters of the r because the y component crossed with the, um, the y component, component crossed with p is zero. So we get D M G T Z hat. Okay. Torque equals R cross F. Um, now we have F is always negative M G Y hat. We have the same thing, only the X component of the um, R hat matters. So we get, we can even write it out a little bit. I can write this one out a little bit more. Negative B X hat cross negative M G Y hat. X hat cross y hat is z hat. So I get d m g. That's my torque and it is in the z hat direction. Is the torque equal to the rate of change, the time rate of change of the angular momentum? Yes, it is. And that is what it should be because torque is the analog of force. Mom angular momentum is the angular is the analog of momentum. All right. And in this one, this one is asking you to use, th this one is easiest if you use angular momentum. When you're talking about orbits, they have all of these special terms that for how far it is, special words for when it is at certain points in the orbit. An Earth satellite has its apogee at 2,500 2, kilometers um, above the surface of the Earth and perigee at 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Now, I always forget these terms, apogee and perigee, but I can tell the longer one is 2,500. The shorter one is 500. You have to do kilometers, kilometers. Um, the Earth's radius is okay. Mm 
we will. Okay, so the Earth's radius is 63, is 6,370 kilometers, but you do not actually need that. So if we use angular momentum conservation, um, we can say that the angular momentum at one point equals the angular momentum at the other. Um, so the mass of the satellite times the, in this case, um, the, uh, the velocity and the radius are always perpendicular. So we don't actually have to worry about cross products if we're only concerned about the magnet magnitude. So mv1 r1 equals mv2 r2. Beautiful. So we can solve this and say v2 equals v1 times r1 over r2. And we want the um we are given that we have r1 is 2500 kilometers and v1 is 2000 uh, 6260 meters per second And R1 is, or sorry, R2 is 500 kilometers. Now, because normally I would switch to SI units, but because the units cancel out, I don't actually need to worry about it here. Okay, and one more example, and then I am going to have to go catch a plane. Okay, shown below is a small particle of mass 20 grams that is moving at a speed of 10 meters per second when it collides and sticks to the edge of a uniform solid cylinder. The cylinder is free to rotate about its axis through its center and perpendicular to the page. The cylinder has a mass of 5, 0.5 kilograms and a radius of 10 centimeters and is initially at rest. What is the angular velocity of the system after collision? Okay, so here I would use um, I would use energy conservation. Um, this is uh, so you have a collision, and we're going. Well, I guess it's not. Um, it's not an elastic collision. It is not an elastic collision, so we're going to have to use something else. Um, we can use angular momentum conservation. So before the collision, we right before, we have an angular momentum of m v r um, and i'm going to leave that in i'm going to worry only about the magnitude and that's saying right before the collision that's where the point where the um the particle is um angular momentum is also equal to i omega the tricky part here is that um we have a more complicated omega a more comp complicated moment of inertia after the collision. After the collision, the moment of inertia is um, one half times the mass of the cylinder r squared plus little m r squared. So then um, I have omega equals m v r over i equals 
m z r over one half big m plus little m r squared all right we could do more examples but not before i catch my plane so we'll see you guys next time for chapter 12.